Um, so I'm going to read uh, just straight through a sequence uh, without stopping, but I will, I'll start with uh, poems from the book Space Parsley, uh, which as, as uh, Kashi um, indicated is, is, is they're in a conversation they can't get out of um, with Petrarch, the 14th century Italian poet and um, specifically with his 366 poem long anguished uh, love love sequence uh, of lyric poems um, and so I'll read from that a sequence but I'll, then I will at a certain point switch into dialogue with Lucretius um, the uh, the poet, a poet of the Roman Republic, um, who wrote a very long uh, philosophical epic poem, De Rerum Natura, or um, On the Nature of Things. And if you want to know anything more about Lucretius, I recommend Lisa Robertson's book, Three Summers, which contains basically all the information about him that you need to know. Um, and you'll know, so the only thing you'll know is that I have changed um, from reading, from conversing with Petrarch to conversing with Lucretius. And you'll know because I'll change my hat. Um, Petrarch kindly has lent me his hat for this first bit. And then I also managed to obtain Lucretius's hat. So at the appropriate moment, I'll switch. You'll hear me when you're listening to me. Samples oblige. I've made a young mistake so I can watch it grow up rigorously into another man from the woman that I am now. The different kinds of crying and reasoning are so boring. Between rolling hopes, there's a vague pain and a cliff. From my lovers, I expected pity but not to be forgiven. I am old now, not like all the reliable people, beans for a long time, soft waves, parts of myself that make me ashamed and I am ashamed, of the vanity and the fruit and my loss of thoughts and the clear broth of splash that whatever pleases the world is a stiff drink. I confess that from the very first sex attack, many years have passed. So I have changed out of my youthfulness and I'm making ice creams in my heart. Mint, having almost adamantine qualities. Distancing left, hard, tears not anymore bathe my breast nor break the sound. What I didn't possess appeared to me to be a miracle in others. The answer to who I am is not who I was. The end of life comes, loads up the evening, sensing the crudeness of my reasoning, percussioning strangulation over the skirt, uphitched. Rudeness or a self-possessed woman for whom little already never danced, cunning or strength or demanding an apology, I will transform into double that which I am, making myself a living man and a green laurel. In cold stations, don't lose the layers. What makes me when I first realize myself in the metamorphosis of my person, a glimpse of my hat in some green fronds they all hope to have for their crown? Because I didn't know where or when anyone might find me alone and crying by the well where a washed mistake might go, seeking inside the waters a sense of time, was already never then, my tongue not touched. I saw power and his malignant fall from which I absorbed the color of a swan. Then I thundered along the lovely banks of drink, chattering and singing always, calling for mercy in a strange voice, lemonade sweet and wine filled. This loving racket was designed to humiliate my fierce pipped heart, in the past, that is, something recalled, but much more than that too, for as they say, from the sweetness comes the bitters. I have to say something. 
from the position that I'm in. This evasiveness has infuriated all the animals. One of them lunges for my chest and grabs out of my heart, saying understandably, I can't make words out of this. He divides it, dressing each part in its own outfit so I don't recognize them, my sense of human. The truth is an anorak's hood blown taut with wind using tetrapack to body out my buzz in a kaleidoscopic clutterfuck of cowboy figurines, one of whom is secretly alive. Oh boy. She spoke as her eyes misted up like car windows and an earthquake ascended from tremors in the stone. I listened. You don't have to read this, but if you do, she said, please don't condemn me for my simplicity. How, I don't know, but you showed yourself independent. You are not as responsible as I am. I put everything there is between life and death, but because time is short, there's pressure, the lead breaks, there are more things on my mind than are written. Some trespass, I speak of it to someone. They give out shiny medals to those who listen hardest. Death becomes an urge to pull up the potatoes with both of your hands. Please give help to the afflicted virtues, the living voices that have been forbidden to shout ink at this birthday card that will anyway get lost in the post. I'm not even mine. I have no presence. I did believe her eyes. The indignity of doing that repaid my dignity. This ball of dust was arduous to catch. It felt like tailor-made humiliation. There's something about sepsis in your chart. Will you ever bathe with a sponge? Who did you pray to when you wrote a poem? Looking for a reason round about the place like someone who sleeps in back gardens and wakes up one morning in grass, shivering fragments. You stand around accusing the evasive tabloid of your own thoughts as some generic water swells the break between paving stones that you always try never to step on, fall in and disappear under. I feel that with time, I will come to be less. Bury me in a waterfall of pies while I smoke a pipe. Clunky. Make me humid and take me on a journey, perhaps. Do you dare to carry me to the baptismal font? The manifestation of a speaking cunt. God will mix your spirits for you. You are already above all thanks. I want to haul you back into your maker, you wizened loaf of bread. You sage stuffing. You come blood yourself up in humble colours and bow to me, to me. Like a contrarian peacock, I sustain myself against your style. You then are eyeless and I'm a pack of sharpest needles. That had better not be repeated. One weird thing can give birth to so many others. Porky Madonna is making a fuss about miracles and the recognition of her life. I think she is sick, inflating in the radius of pity. It might be kind to let her go back home for nothing in the world could have prepared her for the faith of men, which has more bone breaking reprisals, more dryly turning away and scorning and bottling up bits of you in ancient reliquaries than the other option, which is to die without a name. A very painful and erroneous poltergeist wants me to remember my pilgrimage of coins across the desert. But it was many years long and arduous and it all came to a very bad end. And I returned to the damp earth, believing that that was the most pain I'd ever feel. So now is the moment to wind your necks in my gigolos. And if you're angry, scream at the wind. It's your nostrils that keep you alive. This is okay for the stomach-footed ones that have slimed their way to the top and sealed themselves in for the dinner. Holding hostage is the available job from nine to five, but that is the question, to survive or not to survive. You could also try some language, some inky praise to get a patron, but unless you are Orpheus or Amphion, you may as well throw Jesus by the pigtails, it's so wrong. So stick to your guns, son, maybe ask for a raise. I know you're nostalgic for the sound of a clear sermon. There never were occasions so beautiful or smooth to run. Maybe save up for a good thesaurus and see what it says. It says, our crusading days are done. 
You see the death of husbands and the lost women all clothed in brown. Not for this miserable ruin of the people of the East did we raise the dead, but for the mortal narrowness that defends itself in the copse of trees and sticks it to thousands of others unseen, although heard and read. Why inch toward? Why convene there in the circuit of the crown? You can take the knees out of the mind, but you can't take the mind out of the knees. Your years preserved you for so much good. Go in peace, old man, and keep your bees. You will see Italy and the honoured shore once more that was concealed to me as I fought. No sea, no mud, no smoke I sought. Only love that with his searchlight on the moor now vaporises me where most he lights me up. I thought that in nature you can be not what you've dressed up as. That's why, as a fugitive, I am naked and I, I go on all fours. But the roots of the things I have killed stare at me from under the grass. This is how you govern the nature of things, neither without cooperation nor with. In the glowing hours, objects dragged out, not made happy, neither friendly either. I study your society whilst writing these verses because I, the nature of things, must put push into the knowledge of my good friends at home. My goddess wants me to do it well. Which eternal wizard do you, diva, cast out with your words? The one made entirely out of iron weapons? Let's cast him out through waters to sodden lands for only you and not he can order tranquility and peace on earth, not that tedious transformer who's been making the rules. Let's put him in a cave. He is so vulnerable to your eternal victory wound of love, and that's because he places his inner angles in your tower to, sniff, to be sniffed out. And consequently, he's been smelt burning with love for you. Oh, goddess, it seems that you used to hang rebreathing on his golden spirit. Therefore, you, diva, you have been recubed in the saintly body, super circumfused with wise pearls falling from your ears. Come down to pet the placid Romans, plucking peace. Now, neither can we act foolish in this homeland of present iniquity on whatever platform, nor did I manage to breed clarity in my friend's watery spirit. I tried to explain that with many things in common, we were meant to mingle, but everyone needs a little something for himself. So make your peace with the immortal fruit maker. You are what you are and must submit to the atom of all things. The sentence will be six conjunctions long without commutation for everyone has their private pain, their private danger. To resist is to, ju is to be just another indignant bee who mistakes the dust of his work for pollen. We neither promise that the old gods are fallen or that they've gone away because it's better than that. In the empty air, a wise brain sends seeds carefully to dance for true reasons. It's one thing to have a faithful woman available for scrutiny, but a smooth intellect such as this, oh, all contempt relinquished. She seems to conduct dissertations with reason in heaven and that primordial things chaos where the fruit maker makes all the fruit, she peremptorily eggs and brushes out its crinkles and it will bake in the where and how of our flesh and the genitalia of our body things. I pulse in proportion to call out and name the seed for her, my fantasy, my suet mouse, my hut on chicken legs. First, bodies, because out of these everything is first. Before a human uses her eyes, she must use her faith to live on this oppressive earth, weighed down by superstitions which fall from heaven and extend superstitially the horrible super aspect of the mortal instance. 
First, Gaius pitted himself against all immortals, became like a boulder rolled against the favouring eyes, but neither notoriety nor outrage nor their henchmen can suppress the murmurs of heaven. In fact, it amuses the virtuous spirits of the bitter master no end to ornament the natural arts, though when the time comes he'll want the first enclosure. Thus the electric life of the soul persists and produces out of itself long tongues of flame that lick half the world and aggress through every huge mind and soul, even the noble referent of the victor who's cushy. This could finish by naming whatever there was going on rational to the heretical end, but in some, whoever paddles in superstition will subject mystery to vicissitudes. And yet, as we said, no orange cut fruit will vanquish heaven. Each thing in this thing is verified. No fruit bats of impiety. You reason down to small amounts and elements. You put into motion the solemn ground. That wisdom can be momentarily scattered by superstition or criminal knowledge, but you gather yourselves. A promise from Aulis of the fertile blood of virgins. Excellent. The delicious Danaean leader, first of men, even cruded to pledge Iphigenia, but since the virgin's own calculations have always outstripped him from the womb, it seemed bad to take port in his offering. Before the altar, he felt himself to be the master relative, with his own iron to quicken the tile of blood. The waiting ministers flooded the town with their tears. And look what happened in the end. Change churns to send the earth off into hyperspace. It is frightened by the people. Nothing but misery is the upshot. The fatherland prince gives his name to the king in the form of incest. The trembling hands at the altar are sublated into his larger realization that not even these solemn conventions of the sacred perfect can appease clear hymen. But the defiled mixed acts spend time around the enemy that commits them. He considers mastery by mastication of his relatives, then spins to leave, and the first thrust is given to the happy fleet. Let the epic begin. All the... Uh street life to a certain extent starts fear sometimes with a spiritual memory even pre-dying soul clap your father dying even and maybe i've pushed the city too far my sensitivities to landfill districting and minstrel whistles white supremacist graffiti on westbound rail guards all overcome and re-authored uh, reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonists or muted stage of genius. Uh, garbage is growing voices. Condensed Marxism. A warrior depresses underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities or decent bid on the panther name of merciful Marxism. Disquieted home life or, or metaphor for relaxing next to a person who is relaxing next to a gun. I stared at my father for a few seconds then returned to my upbringing. Return to the souls of Ohio black folks. You know, revolution down there pegging at this point. You know what the clown wants? The respect of the ant. He wants to interpret pain only. He wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl. He wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not, um, I'm not tired of these rooms. Just tired of the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted. The government has finally learned how to write poems. Shootouts that briefly align. That make up a parable. Uh, parables like uh, white bodies are paid well. Uh, do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? Uh, rap pictures a river can almost taste the racial divide, can almost crawl a family member's head into a city hall legislative chamber, knows who in this good book will fly. All I do is practice, Lord. Decided not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time I met new audience members for our pain. We pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win the city going uniquely linear. Harlem of the West do a true universe. I will always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife said. So here I sit, twisting in silk ideation. Rifle made of post bellum tar. <laughs> Targets made of an honest language. The San Francisco poetry is how God knows it is me whining. Riding among the lesser respected wolves. 
Let's observe militarization. Dixieless prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California gray coats are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempted to change professions mid poem and a Chicago briefing of white sergeant saying, blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade. They have nothing, Lord. Just nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with inferior facial expressions ball from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. No one get naturalized except federal agents soon carving the equator in the throat. So I'm sorry to make you relive all of this, Lord, all of this pre dying monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the paste. Minstrel scripts shoveled into the walls by the elders, my children sharpening quarters on the city's edge. For these audiences, I project myself into a ghost-like state. For these gangsters, I do the same. Every now and then, take a nervous look, eat, sleep becomes Christ, sleep starts growing a racial identity. Do you ever spiral, Lord? Has the gang age betrayed us? Be patient with my poems, Lord. So much pain is a point to crime. I mean, it has to be if race traitors come with it. Lord, is that my revolver in your hand? You know, better presidents than these have yawned their cages have called us holy slaves, filled the school libraries with cop documentaries, baby, I don't have money for food. <laughs> Shit, I don't have a present moment at all. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm, ricochet sewage near where I collapsed into a rat infested manhood, my new existence as living graffiti. In the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up, house of God in part, no cops in part, my body brings down to Christmas. <laughs> the new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark, extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration, the waistband before the next protest post. Uh, by the way, uh, time is not an illusion, Your Honor. I will save your desk for last. You're a witty, Your Honor. You're moving money again, Your Honor. It, it is only raining one thing, non-white cops. In prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill in the neighborhood making a lot of fuss over its demise, a new leg for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village, a new news to a new white preacher, all in an abstract painting of a president that bought slavery some time, didn't it? The tantric screeches of military boats and election Tuesday cars, a cold-blooded study in leg irons, proof that some white people have actually found new nooses. Their sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and boat action audiences. The Medgar Evers second is definitely my favorite law of science. Fondle news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms, simple policing versus structural frenzies, elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums, artless bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think of terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war, what? Well, with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt guilt, and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. You know, apparently too much of San Francisco was not there in the first place. This dream requires more condemned Africans or put another way, state violence rises down. Or still life is just getting warmed up. Or army life is looking for a new church and ignored all other suggestions. Or folk tale writers have not made up their minds as to who is gonna be their friends. You know, this is the worst downtown yet. And I brought a cigarette everywhere. I've taken many a walk to the back of a bus. They let on out the back of a storyteller's prison sentence, then on out the back of slave scars, but this is my comeback face. I left my watch on the public bathroom sink and took the toilet with me. Threw it at the first bus I saw, eating single mothers half alive. It flew through the bus line numbered and on out the front of the White House. Hopefully you find comfort downtown, but if not, we brought you enough cigarette filters to make a decent winter coat. A special species of handshake lets all know who's king and what's the lifespan of uniform cloth. This coffin needs to quit acting like those are birds singing. Rusty nails have no wings. Have no voice other than that of a white world dying. Their book pages in the gas pump. Catchy, isn't it? The way three nooses is the rule. Or the way potato sack masks go so well with radio codes. 
or the way condemned Africans fought their way back to the ocean only to find waves made in the 1920s, burnt up piano parts, European backdoor deals, and red flowers for widows who spent all day in the sun mumbling in San Francisco. Red flowers, but what's the color of a doctor visit? There are book titles in the streets. Book titles like Hero, You Make a Better Zero, or Hey, Fur Cold Lady, the President is Dead, or Pay Me Back in Children, or They Hung Up Their Bodies in Their Own Museums. Another book title is Pulled from a Drum Solo, Run Here, Hero. Lied to hide in place. All the bullets in 10 precincts know where to go. There's no heaven or any other good idea in the sky. Politics means that people did it and people do it. Understand that when in San Francisco and other places that was never really there. I bet this ocean thinks it's an ocean, but it's not. It's just 60 Mission Street. I know who's king. King of thin things. You know, like America, I'm proud to deserve to die. I'm going to eat my dinner extra slow tonight in this police state candy dispenser you all call a neighborhood. No set of manners goes unpunished. Never mind a murderer's insomnia or the tea kettle preparing everyone for police sirens. I'm off to make a church bell out of a bank window. Kitchens meant more to the masses back in the day. Before that, we had no enemy. You know, somewhere in America, the prison bus is running on time. You're going to lose your job before a revolution here. Somewhere I won't be home for breakfast. Everyone out here now knows my name, and I won't be turned against for at least four months. The cop in the picket line is a hardworking rookie. The sign in my hands get more and more laughs. It says the picket line got cops in it. I can take care of those windows for you if you want, but someone else got to go inside your gas tank. It was clear to man that rich people had talked too much this year. Hey, why don't you go ahead and throw down that marble park bench everyone's looking up at? You know, get the Romans out of your mind. It may be a good night's sleep would have changed the last 20 years of my life. Playing the instruments like punching the wall. What would you have me do? Replace the population? Give brotherhood back to the winter? Stop smoking cigarettes with the barely dead? You know, they listen in on the Sabbath. Police called the police on me. There was a white candlestick beneath my detention. I ruined the soup again, thought the judge, as he took off his pilgrim robe behind the white people's door and more. I didn't get lucky. I got what was coming to me, he tossed. I, I fight me back, the man said. Of course, to himself, washing windows with a will to live. Tin can on his left shoulder, enjoying the bright brand new light with all party goers, both supernatural and supernaturally down there. What, what, what is this, elevator traveling side to side? Like 1,000 bitter Polaroid pictures that you actually try to eat. All the furniture on this street nailed to the cement, cheap furniture, but we have commitment. This morning, an essay opens a conversation between enemies. Why? Because you control every grain of processed sugar between here and a poor person's border. Because in the tent can on my left shoulder, I can hear the engines of deindustrialization. Man, you should get into painting, you know, tell lies more deeply. And this month, I'm rooting for the traitor. Carting cement to my pillow. Here we will build. I'm high again. Not talking much. Hey, hey, why don't you climb up the organ pipe to our apartment floor? I'm high again. Calling everything church, singing along to a courtyard, thanks to a horn player's holy past. I'm just putting a real jacket on it. Talk about a real five years. Key memories like these in the pocket next to the toll receipts. You know, that man lost a wager with the God of good causes. I mean, stood up for himself a little too late. Maybe too early. I can still see 20 angles of his jaw zigzagging through the cold world of deindustrialization. There's an art to it. I will tell my closest friends one day. You know, first, <clears throat> first I, I should have apologized um, to the souls of the house. Uh, because I'm wearing the cheekbones of the mask only, uh, uh, like a pill bottle whose name is yours, name tagged on the side of a factory of wrist. I mean, teeth of the mask now, back of the head of the mask now. A new phase of anti-anthropomorphism, fending for real faces, stuck with one of those cultures that believes I chose this family. I'm not creative, just the silliest of the revolutionaries. <laughs> My blood drying on my only jacket, the police state psychic middleman evangelizing for the creation of an unmasses, an unmedgar, blood of a lamb less racialized or awesome prison sentence. Right angle made between a point on a Louisiana plantation and a five-year-old's rubber ball three feet high and falling like a deportee plane to complete my interpretation of garden variety genocide. I'm small talk about loving your enemies a little more realistically, about paper tigers and also gold. I need my left hand back. You know, broke my neck on a piano key, found paradise in a fist fight. Maybe I should check into the Cuban line, watching the universe's last metronome. Some call black Jacobins. Hey, hey, just wait. These religions will start resigning in a decade or two. Some colorfully, some transactionally in a cotton gothic society, class betrayal, gone glasses. I mean, ironically, my window started fogging over too as I was trying to figure out which Haiti would get me through the winter, which, um, which poem houses souls, which socialist breakthroughs. Breakthroughs like taking 10 steps back and then finally trying to do this, like introducing Gabriel Prosser to Thelonious Monk. Man, I remember childhood. I remember the word childhood being a beginning. Scribbling on an amazing grace, I rented this body from some circumference of slavery. Remember being kicked out the Midwest. Strange fruit theater, lithium in circuses, like-minded stomachs, the ruling class blessing their blank checks with 
with levy phone, with opioid tea, sentient dollar bills yelling to each other, pocket to pocket, cello stands in the precinct for a company and counter revolutionaries. My mother raised me with a simple pain. A poet loses his mind, you know, like the room has weather uh, or first girlfriend gravity. Difference between me and you is the madness wants me forever. A pair of apartments defining both my family and political composure, books behind my back, Bail money paved into the streets plank. Uh, euphoria, euphoria, cliche. <laughs> Bracing for the medicines, recall, sharing a dirty deli sounds with my friends, black Jacobins, underground topography of a grandmother's hand, psychology of the mask now. Teeth of the mask again. You know, a tour guide through your robbery. I also am. Uh, cigarette saying, look what I did about your silence. Ransom water and box spring gold. This decade is only for accent grooming, I guess. Ransom water and box spring gold. The corner store must dot war games, I guess. All these tongues rummage junk. Did you know that the start of mass destruction begins and ends in restaurant bathrooms that some people use and other people clean? Are you telling me it's a rag in the sky waiting for you? Yes, we, we've written a scene. We set a stage. You know, we should have been in warehouse jobs are for communists, but now more corridor and hallway have walked into our lives. Now the whistling is less playful and the barbed wire overcrowded too, my dear. If it is not a city, it is a prison. If it has a prison, it is a prison, not a city. When a courtyard talks on behalf of military issue, all walks take place outside of the body. Dear life to your left, a medieval painting to your right. And none of this really makes an impression. Crop people living in thin air, you have five minutes to learn how to see through this breeze. When a mask goes sideways, barbed wire becomes the floor, barbed wire becomes the roof, 40 feet into the sky, becomes out of bounds. When a mask breaks in half mind, which way the eyes go? Did you know they killed the world for the sake of giving everyone the same backstory? We're watching Gary Indiana fight itself into the sky. Old pennies for win. For that win feeling you get before the hood goes up and over your headache, pennies that stick together and mocking all aspirations. I mean, stuck together pennies was the first newspaper I ever read, along with the storefront dwelling army that always lets us down, where the Holy Spirit favors the back room souls in a situation that offer a hundred ways to remain a loser. Souls watching a clock, hoping their eyes don't lie to sad people. What, what was we talking about again? The narrator asked the graveyard, a 10 minutes flat, said the graveyard, the funeral only took 10 minutes. I never tell that to anyone again. You just gonna pin the 90s on me? All 30 years of them? Then why should I know the difference between sleep and satire? The pyramid of corner stores fell on our heads. We died right away. That builder wants to climb up and jump off another building. These are downtown decisions. Somewhere on this planet, it's August 7th, and we running down the rush thinking one more needs to come with me. Man, what evaporated on earth so that we could be sent back down? I talk facing away from the dead. They replace me with the change in my pocket. <laughs> A penny that's yet to be invented. They say, uh, you have to know how to cut a throat on the way to cutting a throat. After sleeping on a mattress made from two garbage bags of clothes, I became content with the small gestures of plantation fire. I mean, playing with couch ashes, I realized how weird the universe was. It exists in so many places, so many random things. It interrupts me while I'm trying to dream, like your clay correspondence, Lord. To be transparent, I have 20 books next to a bullet like an old man giving advice at the beginning of a revolution. I've really done it, Lord. Explored the mumbles of my mind. Explored what's naturally there and I found no brainwashing. I found Africa, Lord. I have a future. It, it takes place in the diasporic South. I have morning possessions, modern militancy. I mean, windows to the South. I'll walk on a missile for food. I guess you will not want flowers for a few years, Lord. Will I be tied face to face with the country I murdered? Merge with us, Lord. Our old metal versus new metal. Our own metal versus a pool of meandering and peerless faces, a multiculturalism of sorts. The dead will replace me with a comedian's chest cavity. Instead of a chest cavity held tight, it takes a violent middleman for me to talk to myself. Stories that travel through other people's stories, you know, a song about a song, a hemisphere about a hemisphere. <laughs> stories that travel through a conquered poet. Hey, my mother remembers Africa, Lord. She killed on behalf of you, Lord. I wore a machete all winter and no one asked me what it meant. I read 1,000 books in front of the world. You know what I do is fight poems and sleep through decking in San Francisco prayer circles, watch people play for post-working class associative services or recreations of a governor's desk, ruling class art of utility plan, find the sociopathic bureaucrat, a day some white people scare even easier. TV in a basket next to a ceramic baby wearing ceramic armor, musket progeny, fantasizing through the art of the poor. And their trendy latches locked before God. Black art hunted down like a dog. A hand over my friends, Lord. Lord, I think I'm gonna die in a war. 
unelected white people in my small house, like a blue song of no spiritual effect, a dollhouse ace bomb, a pony show near dead bodies, apartheid weddings that go right, apartheid white people who give birth to mathematicians, the spiritual continuity of barracks and police stations, a chemical interpretation of a Sunday trip to church, church smells in their pockets, a river mistaken for, for a talking river. No autobiography outside of small personal victories of violence and drug use, made in the image of God's trinkets, what white abolitionists confided in their children about. Chemical assurances that they will switch from black artists to white artists, from black God to white God, from black worker to white worker. You know, I think about you cautiously, Lord, in the same way I think about my childhood. <laughs> Fox O Friday nights, most of life is mute. A comedian points out a planter's field to a priest, King Sugar Cane, King Cotton, King Revolutionary, the Bible Central, containing all modes of shallow introduction, introducing an unlisted plan of class speaking about fevers and balance sheets and reassuring the masses that we could figure out our fathers later. A priest took my mother lightly, Lord, stood in front of parishioners, re fantasies about black art, priest reading confidently before I broke him and broke his parallel. You know, the day after the day, I've never been a poet before. A little brother watches his big brother's friends. They lean rifles on shelter walls. They agree with me and call it literature. It, it, it's a simple matter, this revolution thing, to really lie to no one, to keep nothing God like, to write a poem for God. Archaeophonics. I'm just visiting this voice. I'm just visiting the molecular structures that say what I am saying. I am just visiting the world at this moment, and it's on fire. It's always been on fire. I'm saying this, and it's saying me. That's how it works, seesaw-like. The archive in the mouth, and the archive is on fire. That's the story, the sun and the body, and the body and the sun. It was like this, just like this, the world that's coming toward me, and the world around me. Around me are words saying this, saying fire, saying something, or all of it. Strangeness becomes you. The old language is the old language. It don't mean shit. It's not where you begin, it's how you finish. Everyone's got beer muscles when they're young. Try as you must, break as you will. Solo in space, clinging to space. Fuck, the air said, passing a corner. A long, ropey snot hitting a gutter. To know something and fail. Why discount it? The onslaught of eyes beneath a fuck you sky. The syntax breaks down its mangled draft and says, one day the poor will have nothing to eat but the rich. I hate that when syntax connects me to the rich. Speech acts for a dying world. A field sparrow is at my window tapping at its reflection, a tired antique God trying to communicate. It's getting to me as I set out to sing the nimbus of flora under a partly mottled sky. As I look at the end and sing, so what? Sing, live now thinking, why not? I'm listening and receiving now, and it feeds me. I'm always hungry when the beautiful is too much to carry inside my winter, when my library is full of loss, full of wonder, as the polis is breaking and casts a shadow over all of me, thinking of it, when the shadows fall in ripples, when the medium I work in is deathless and I'm living inside one great example of stubbornness as my head is stove in by a glance, as the day's silver tip buds sway in union, waving to the corporate sky, when I said work and meant lyric, when I thought I was done with a poem as a vehicle to understand violence. I thought I was done with a high tone, shitty world, done with a voice in its constituent pap. 
called down the inherited phenomenal world when it's raining in the book, lost to the world in an abundance of world, like listening to a violin when the figure isn't native, but the emotion is. When everything is snow and what lies ahead is a mesmer's twirling locket, I thought I was done with the marvel of ephemeral shadow play, the great design, and all that. I thought I was done with time, its theatricality, glamour, and guff. Gusting cloud, I see you. I become you in my solitary thinging here in partial light. When I said voice, I meant the whole unholy grain of it. It felt like paradise. Meaning rises and sets, now a hunter overhead, now a bear at the pole, and the sound of names, the parade of names. <clears throat> that I saw the light on Nanatuck Avenue, that every musical note is a flame native in its own tongue, that between bread and ash there is fire, that the day swells in crests, that I found myself born into it with sirens and trucks going by out here in a poem, that there are other things that go into poems like the pigeon, cobalt, dirty windows, sun, that I have seen skin in marble, eye in stone, that the information I carry is mostly bacterial, that I am a host, that the ghost of the text is unknown, that I live near an Air Force base and the sound in the sky is death, that sound like old poetry can kill us, that there are small things in the poem, paper clips, gauze, tater tots, knives, that there can also be emptiness fanning out into breakfast rolls, macadam, stars, that I am hungry, that I seek knowledge of the ancient sycamore that also lives in the valley where I live, that I call to it, that there are airships overhead, that I live alone in my head out here in a poem near a magical tree that I saw the light on Nanatuck Avenue and heard the cry of a dove recede into a rustle, that its cry was quiet light falling into a coffin, that it altered me, that today the river is a camera obscura bending trees, that I sing this of metallic shimmer, sing the sky, the song, all of it, and wonder if I am dying, would you come back for me? True discourse on power. When I say the ghost has begun, you understand what is being said. That time is not how we keep it or measure first there was, then wasn't. It twitters and swerves like the evening news. Now outside is 3D, inside non-representational space. Every law has an outside, and inside I have witnessed cruelty break and gulp and sweat, then punch out a smile. To be awake, this talking in space, to be absorbed in the ongoing, beliefs a shadow to be looked into and into until relief is gone. The dark triangle settled in the midst of traffic is on us. Time comes in adverbial bursts, a glass of beer, a smoke. The evening air refreshes, startles, and the questions grow deeper like shadows across storefronts, a forsythia ticking against the dirty pain. This was time, up, down, up, and you were a part of it. If I say it, can you feel it now? Imagine lightning strikes, rain falls, end drives, clouds pass, night clarified, stars. In silent pictures, the tree falls in the optic nerve. The sound is chemistry. There's no getting to it, or if getting to it feels like the actual sound, is that silence, alone here with my shadows drawn. 
So what's this about a horse and a castle, a tree and its leaving? What's this about in solitary splendor, the undertow and its threshold, a door and the opening sky? Or because a play of reflection lit up my bumper and caught my eyes, I saw the shadow of a falcon. Because a sound a poor man uttered reached my ear, I fell into song. If the syntax of loyalty is not tragic, then what is the wager? If there were time, would it be ours? A note on the text. The good poets defy things with their heart. This is how a fragment enters the people. Don't say beautiful, say the beautiful. Say, wait, I gotta start again. I just lost it. <clears throat> a note on the text. The good poets defy things with their heart. This is how a fragment enters the people. Don't say beauty, say the beautiful, say the people. Say it is through chance that writing entered the people, their imagery and love of nature in glutted flowers. This place of fleshlessness, here is my song, the only recourse of sun. Even its smallest syllables can be sewn into the mouth. It is on the tongue the sun abides, two syllables fastened to each end to stretch the vocal pattern, its linen-like thread. Sentences in a synapse field. For I wanted sound to dig into sound, for snow and blood, for wine and mirrors, for electrons and electricity, for debris, for damaged art, our collective fortune, future. For as long as there have been soldiers, there have been poets. For as long as poets, there has been a bridge. For I wanted to hold a room in silence for debris flooding back into a wave. For as long as particles a charge, for it should be incredulity to be alive for these things that can be told until mystery becomes elegy, for it was March going into April, for the day was speaking the day, for what you thought, for what you buried, for who you are. out of the world in real time. The silence in this room is causing a looping effect. All I see is wood grain and air when it's raining in the true north of the poem. It gives purchase to the page. It gives courage. I want to tell you this isn't just all song. I want to say this scrap of paper has sky in it to be lost in its yesterglow, casting shadows upon a silent H. H for hour and honor, honest and air, also ghost, ghastly, ghetto, etc. Who knew such light could come from torn paper? What comes first, flag or paper, voting or votive? There are distances, the whole archival light blooming, I recast words to say everything touched by light remembers that light. To recast light that touched marble strewn from time, laying among weeds and trash, worn from human traffic and ordinary songs. In my head, a flywheel, unable to power anything other than song. And all that's left is survival. Some old piece of canvas flapping in the gale. The oak creaks and the air is keening. That green light could only be oxygen. I am witness, a copy of rain in June, a glinting vowel. And then one more from these new books, and then I'm going to read a new poem.
the blossom is stronger than us. But to want the beauty of the hollyhock, Augustine's sad reading in the alcove. So much sand and wind with us all this time. So many bullets and boys crying mother before the weather. But why after all this nothing but the changing weather, playing the changes, the children, in the magnitude, love, in the horror, love. So I'm going to close with just a brand new poem. Um, it's called Find Spot Unknown. And the first time I actually saw Find Spot Unknown is in the British Museum. You know, it's an artifact that has an unknown origin. And I don't know, it feels like a good way, metaphor, to think about the poem, an artifact of unknown origin. Find Spot Unknown. Thus far, we have spoken only the codes, a litany of survival. Thus spoke the silvered asphodel next to the factory ruin. Sound carries on water. My subject is the wind. To take umbrage at what a tree can do, watching one single birch become lightning, stunning the sky. Landscape is a made thing. To see the mind seeing itself, to see thought, a wing in night, the long brooding, take it, listen, the night is orchestral when the power's on, everything disporting, a furred wand upon nothingness. I get it, it was good to leave the world, to find myself in thou. There's a lot to be said for seeing in the dark, and more to the light when there's nothing to see. If I write about the moon, it's because it's there. I am landlocked, surrounded by rivers and lakes, pills and leaves. I saw a better life. It was far off, sun on moss next to a friend, the softening air, the dandelion fluff. It was kind of real and kind of not. Can't see it today. And out of nothing, breath, a beast-like shadow in the glass. If I brought back every feeling I had, where would I put them? What could they mean to this world on the floor? It was best to let the moon unravel and focus the truth of the music. It was best to let the music unravel and focus the truth of night, like when I found you in the back of my mind. I am talking about people in the night, people inside the night, the night and what we are made of, the things and the people, the signal and its noise. A bird flapped its wings inside Itamar's chest, a canary or a dove, he thought. Let it speak for all who have no voice, he proclaimed, public and private hitting the same nail's head, but being a bird, being an inside thing. In what sense entailed layers of such number, we grew grand, unacknowledged, givers of whose law we were said to be. So were we social, not needing to intend it, political, political or not. So indelibly polis had been put on us, a gut string canticle caroling in back. The apprentice presses crown fever had us wary to be of bodily cast. Always any way already, only more and all the more so now. Certain cloud formations filled us, the side pocket club, our habitual hangout. We dealt in angles, detour, drift, coaxed amenity, a warm gust or glow of substernal sun. Getting older, he grew less of a bodily cast, Itamar reminded us. Back from a heavenly sojourn, the canary or the dove had taken him on. A sojourn he at least called heavenly. His lot drawn elsewhere, he said. 
I envied him the wings in his chest, the wings I found suspect. Dove or canary, I'd have taken either, Galilee or coal mine, either for it to be mine, the it and the of of the it of it, the glue truly all interstice I'd see. So went the way of the wings, Itamar said, when I pushed back, the glue truly all as if nothing, all interstice. So a dove or a canary flapped its wings inside Itamar's chest. Recondite sun radiating there burned away the clouds, Itamar's not knowing. Time would tell, we were told. We were told time had a story whose working out, part fugue, part futile, kept coming back to the canary or the dove inside Itamar's chest. The bird had begun to peck its way out. Time told all. Itamar had swallowed a bird cage, it turned out. A skinny boy growing up whose protruding ribs made it look like that way. So time said, the teasing went. So went the teasing out of the tale, the tell, the beaked adage it added up to, the winged anti-denouement. It was death we made amends with, it seemed. Death it wanted us to make amends with, the dove or the canary beating inside Itamar's chest, inside each of our chests. Death was quietly Tet's lord, chronophobic Tet exhorting us amends lay yet to be made. Chronophobic Tet times manuensis, an elfin command taken up almost. A utopic perfume or a sonic utopia it was, or it seemed she came in on. Our Thursday night disbursement cracked the hairs with letting it in. All was at risk, but all would be okay, it intimated, humoring us, we knew. The interstice between palm and eucalyptus, a sympathetic string. A utopic perfume or a sonic utopia, all our favorites came up on the box. A cubicle rounded at the edges we floated in, suling lacrimosity shoved our heads back, a shove that wasn't wind, but like a wind, a sad wind remembering so-called, but not a wind. The garden wall we stood beside was a bank of weeping flutes, the garden sheer scaffolding, flowerless, abstract. There we were, honorary Tanganyikans, the weeping Sulings landed in Sunda, the river people gathered on the riverbank, Vincent Chancy up next on the box. Farther inland lay dune after dune of churchical sand, synthetic sky, non-existent flowers, heuristic perfume. It was into the athmic again almost, the way the reticular held its own, an unyielding siphon, stalks of calla lilies had they been there. Sheaved, one wanted to say, shelved its echoing cousin, a saliva non tropo attending one's tongue. To have come upon it late, one thought, but lucky to have come at all. No time soon would one be done with it, even so. The wall was no more wall than floor, it seemed the weeping flutes as much beneath us as beside us, flowers that were not. The Suling's warble insisted time was emergence, not enclosure, the swallowed bird cages protruding bones. A whisk broom or an arch archeological brush it was as well, the beginnings of rib cage theater gone back to again bone gotten up breathing in and out again, wheeze the weeping soolings witness as well. Yet tomorrow dreamt he slept reaching for Tet's waist. 
the great morning soon come, truly come. The flowers brought down the wall they were, there though they were, against ever being there. Bluster, late bloom, floor they'd be. A lytic rash on my th thigh bone mimicked flute, floor, flower. Likewise warbling, the sympathetic what it was, it all otherwise needed, sliver and slit. So was it our Thursday night excursion was a cubicle or a capsule or a pod in outer space. Flowers would be forever milk thistle pressed in the book of so. The flutes and the flowers lay coral to all thetic enterprise. Lytic rash and outbreak or besetment that was never not there, the high cries testament. Not since the sirening phonio had we heard it so much, the fundament it was, fallen step or receding floor, Gnostic rebuff. So was it our Thursday night cave or enclosure tended emergence as our indwelling swelled. The more in we were, the more out we were, was the fugitive equation we chased and were whose application or complied with, lytic bloom shadowing lunar back of thigh. Tell us, Tet, we left off asking, dove or canary? We confessed our weakness and called it sweet, mystic sweetness whose boast we'd be. Breed as we were of no nation, cut loose from nation, a sweet mystic beast we each would be. Beans and bits of duck leg in one's bowl meant something now. The synthetic sky proved earth related, plane of panic and alarm, Jackie Mack blew beset by on the box. Bittersweet beast had sweet to do with it at all. He would have nothing to do with inevitablest thought and neither would we. We were would-be Tanzanians now, no more colonial non-munition for us, no more Tanganyika laugh attacks. All our strain and chagrin fell away. Visitude A, Visitude B. Time before it went on the clock, we again had all there was. Time new to itself, a new tune on the box, made up tune on a make-believe box Itamar held inside his head. He spun CDs and records on Thursday nights, a pocket of sound, a pocket of solace, a bird inside his chest, all the better. It felt like we too were inside his chest and inside his head, the abandoned boy feeling it most. It was he who bandied questions about, questions about God about, questions about when and where about. Itamar, this meant, was only always almost there, almost all there, an insofarian, beset by qualification always, hip segue notwithstanding. The high cry loomed or lurked, heard or not, no matter. Loomed or lurked, notwithstanding, a bat downside up. There was a bend in the road where it dipped as well, closer to the beach, but with scraggly trees on either side. Bark falling from their sides, eucalyptuses the wind had beaten on. It had the calm of a lone coast requiem an abidance chorusing quietly, what would be, would be, what would not, not be, ground of a cast incumbent and remote. Bomb it might have been, taken as bomb, the blessing bodily being was, hailed and shied away from both, the blessing bodily being was. The exposed trunks of the eucalyptuses looked like flesh of a certain kind, stalwart, womanly, white, 
unremitting, Tet's legendary thigh. A bird beak tumor pecked away at his lug. Itamar feared, and we feared with him. So gratuitous, disaster had gotten to be. We had been telling it to the birds. The birds had been telling it back. To be the bird inside Itamar's chair, chest, dove or canary, but benevolent was our wish. All this was a stone's throw from our cubicle, our capsule, our capsule or our cubicle, exactly that. To the extent the birds were our nervousness, we wanted them gone. We shooed them away now, day and night. Their conference no good would come of was all vaudeville crosstalk, obscene homilies we declined. Each bird puffed out its chest as if having died and gone to heaven, died and gone to Davenport at least. One found oneself awake inside Lone Coast Infirmary, wind howling so loud outside, tree turned into shrub. The birds were palpitations beneath our breastbones. The torpedo press's virus was rattling our nerves. Whatever it was we were in was a rock. The rejected stone we'd heard Marley sing about. We, the philosophic posse, to see with the mind of music our goal. Whatever it was we were in had been thrown. Call it what one would, cubicle, Capsule, alchemical cabinet, lapis. <laughs>